Welcome to Determining Formulas from Mass. In this lesson, we're going to look at how to take data and get the empirical formulas and molecular formulas from it. Say we have an unknown substance. We can run tests on that substance to try and figure out what it's made up of. If we do those tests, we'll likely get back information that looks like this. This data tells us the percent composition of elements in the unknown substance. And I can use this data to find the empirical formula of the unknown substance. As we move through the lesson, we'll see how we can get from an empirical formula to a molecular formula. But the first step is this one, finding the empirical formula. So, these test results tell us that there's 89% oxygen in this unknown substance and 11% hydrogen. The easiest way to deal with this is to recognize that percentage composition talks about the part of the whole. And because percent composition works for any size sample, I can basically make up a sample size that gives me nice numbers. So I can say that my total sample size is 100 grams, which automatically makes it 89 grams of oxygen, because 89% of 100 is 89 and 11 grams of hydrogen because 11 percent of 100 is 11 and this is good because it gives me masses to work with and masses allow me to convert to moles and that's going to be the goal here I want to get two moles to do that I'm going to use a little dimensional analysis here so 89 grams of oxygen times I know that one mole of oxygen is 16 grams of oxygen. And I can set up the same thing for hydrogen. I want to change these grams of hydrogen to moles of hydrogen. And I know that one mole of hydrogen weighs one gram of hydrogen from my periodic table. So if I do these calculations, I'm going to be able to find out the moles of oxygen and hydrogen in this sample. So 89 times 1 divided by 16 is 5.5 moles. And 11 grams of hydrogen times 1 divided by 1 is 11 moles of hydrogen. Now that I have moles, I can look at the mole ratio. So hydrogen is 11 to oxygen's 5.5. Now I know this formula is not possible because the law of multiple proportions says that the ratio should be in small whole numbers. And furthermore, I know that empirical formulas are the lowest whole number ratios. So again, I don't have a whole number here. I got to get rid of that. One of the things I can do is divide by the smaller of the subscripts. So I'm going to divide this by 5.5 and I'm going to divide the 11 by 5.5. And that's going to get me 11 divided by 5.5 is 2, and 5.5 divided by 5.5 is 1. So this is the empirical formula of my substance. The key step of this example was deciding to use a 100 grams to figure out the masses from the percent composition information. This next step of converting masses to moles and then using a mole ratio, we're going to look at again in the next example just to get a better idea of it. In this example, I have an 8.1 gram sample and I know that it contains 4.9 grams of magnesium and 3.2 grams of oxygen. So magnesium and oxygen are my two components of this substance. I know that the magnesium is 4.9 grams and I know that the oxygen is 3.2 grams. Now I'm given the masses, I want to make this into moles. So I'm going to set up my conversion factors for dimensional analysis. I'm going to have grams of magnesium on the bottom and moles of magnesium on top because that's what I want to change to. From the periodic table, I know that one mole of magnesium is 24.3 grams of magnesium. And for oxygen, I know that one mole of oxygen is 16 grams of oxygen, again from the periodic table. Having set up the conversion, I can now see that this is 0 0.2 moles of magnesium and that this is 0 0.2 moles of oxygen. If I set up my ratio, that is Mg 0 0.2 and oxygen 0 0.2. Again, this violates the law 
I must have whole numbers in these subscripts. So just like last time, I can divide by the smallest subscript. It just so happens that they're the same. 0 0.2 and 0 0.2. So I already know that these combine in a one-to-one -one ratio and form MgO as the empirical formula. But I can still do the same process of dividing each of these by 0 0.2 just to make sure. So 0 0.2 divided by 0 0.2 gives me 1. This also drops out, gives me 1. So it's just MgO. And this is the empirical formula from mass data, showing the conversion from mass to moles and setting up the mole ratio. In these two examples, we've come up with the empirical formulas. We're now going to take this a step further and look at how to find the molecular formula. If I want to find the molecular formula, I have to be given an additional piece of information that the other two examples did not have. And that piece of information that I need to have is the molecular mass of the actual compound. And in this problem, it's 56 AMUs for our unknown compound. So with this example, we're going to show how to get from the empirical formula to the molecular formula. So I've been given the empirical formula as being CH2. And I know that CH2 as an empirical formula had to be reduced from something. Some amount of carbons and some amount of hydrogens. I had to reduce this molecular formula that I don't know what it is. It had to be reduced to give me CH2 as an empirical formula. The only question is, how much was it reduced by? So I'm going to use a ratio to figure out what that amount that it was reduced by actually was. And here's what that looks like. I'm going to find the formula mass of the empirical formula. So C and H, carbon and hydrogen. I have one carbon. I have two hydrogens. Carbon is 12 AMUs, and hydrogen is 1 AMU. That's going to give me a formula mass, or the empirical formula mass for this, is going to be 12 plus 2, or 14 AMUs. I can refer to 14 AMUs as the empirical mass, or the empirical formula mass. Now remember, I know the molecular mass is 56 AMUs. So I'm going to find a ratio of the molecular mass to the empirical mass. This ratio is going to tell me how many times greater the molecular mass is than the empirical mass. So let's plug this in. Molecular mass is 56 AMU, and the empirical mass is 14 AMUs. When I divide 56 by 14, that's going to give me 4. And 4 tells me how much the original formula was reduced by to get to CH2. So now I just got to go the other direction and get back. So I have one carbon in the empirical formula. I'm going to multiply that by 4. That's going to give me C4. I have two hydrogens in the empirical formula. I'm going to multiply that by 4. And that's going to give me eight hydrogens. And this is the molecular formula for an unknown compound that has an empirical formula of CH2 and a molecular mass of 56 AMU. To recap what I did, I first found the empirical mass, then I created a ratio between the molecular mass given to me in the problem and the empirical mass. That gave me a factor that I used to then multiply the empirical formula by to give me the original molecular formula over here, C4H8. That wraps up our lesson on how to determine empirical and molecular formulas from a variety of data. Any questions you have on this lesson, write them down in your notes and bring them with you to class.